do a stupid thing, I'm not denying that, of course, but why should that split decision that I made um, when I was a child, why should that affect the rest of my, my life? The only thing I can remember about that day was my solicitor, who was a woman, saying to the judge, I can guarantee that this girl, you will never see her again. And I remember feeling that is so true, because clearly I was, I, it, was, it was a terrible day and I was very, very ashamed. How long should a previous caution or conviction stay on your police record? And what should a potential employer be told about your past? That's at the heart of a case being heard here at the highest court in the land over the next few days. What the Supreme Court decides could make a real difference to people like Lee and Ellie. Ellie Jones's interactions with the criminal justice system happened more than 15 years ago. When I was 11, um, a friend and I went into the bathroom at the end of school and we were playing around with a lighter and we set some toilet roll on fire and that was it really. The next day we were called in by the head teacher and the police turned up um, and I was arrested and given a reprimand. Because obviously arson is a class A offence, it's a violent offence, um, which looks really serious on a record. And my mum didn't really want that for me as an 11 year old, but the police told us at the time, just sign it because it will come off your record after five years. Then when she was 14, Ellie got into a fight at school and the police were involved again. And the police said that they were arresting me and I was going to get a reprimand and at the time my mum said well she's already got one from when she was 11 and um, so she can't have another one and they said don't worry it's going to come off when she's 19 it won't affect her at all. But in the end that wasn't true as Ellie discovered when as an adult she decided on a career as a teacher. When I'm applying for a job that I'm being paid for like in a school they see a box that's been ticked, um, that I have a criminal record. They see arson, they see ABH and don't really give me a second chance. Lee Hardy has a conviction dating back 30 years to when she was at university and had a part-time job in a pub while claiming benefit. I picked up extra hours but didn't fail to stop making the claim for supplementary benefits. So I worked for six weeks over the summer didn't give it a second thought until a couple of months later, someone knocked on the door and it was an inspector from the, I think the Department of Health and Social Security, as it was then, saying that actually I'd been reported for making a false claim to receive benefit. Straight away I said yes. I, I didn't try to, to, to hide what had happened, obviously. I, I said yes, I, I've done that, it was wrong. I shouldn't have done it and I was very remorseful straight away. Age 20, Lee was convicted of three offences of making a false statement, one for each time she'd signed on. She was fined £90 and thought that was the end of it. For years, she worked in the NHS. As she rose through the ranks, although her criminal record didn't stop her getting jobs, when she applied for them, she was horrified that it came up. I think there's still a huge stigma. I think it affects more people than we would imagine. I've explained it to people I've needed to explain it to over the years. I had to explain it to my son, for example, to my husband, and they're not conversations that you particularly want to have, but I'm not the same person that I was when I was a 19-year-old student. So, you know, why would that information be relevant to someone now thinking about whether I'm the best person for the job or whether I can take on a voluntary role? We've all got used to criminal record checks, so-called DBS checks, when we apply for certain jobs and other roles. They're a way of preventing unsuitable applicants from working with children and other vulnerable people. But the case to be heard in this courtroom argues the government has got it wrong, that people are being unfairly penalised for past mistakes. The cases include Ms P, a woman who was cautioned for stealing a sandwich in 1999 and then prosecuted for stealing a book. She failed to appear in court because she was suffering from schizophrenia. That meant she was convicted twice, once for theft, once under the Bail Act. Also Mr W, who was convicted of actual bodily harm in 1982 when he was 16. And Mr A, who stole a coat from a market in 1981 when he was 17. 
When he was 18, he was convicted of stealing a motorcycle and driving without insurance. In 2013, the government introduced a filtering system which removes certain crimes from DBS checks after 11 years, half that for under-18s. But that doesn't apply in these cases. Multiple offences and violent or sexual offences continue to be disclosed for life. The government believes this policy safeguards children and vulnerable adults from harm. Tomorrow, here in the Supreme Court's Courtroom 1, it will appeal decisions that went against it in lower courts. Campaigners argue disclosing these records infringes human rights. Clearly, if people have committed crime, there is a time in which that information may be relevant for jobs that they go to do in the future. But there is a time when that information should recede into the past and should be kept private. And at the moment, we don't have that line for many people. Well, I think if someone has a criminal conviction, then prospective employers, for example, or charities looking to take someone on, do have a right to know about the person they're taking on and criminal convictions after all are public. The government has already changed the rules so that very minor convictions, one-off convictions, after a period of time are disregarded. So I think that balance between the individual's right to privacy but the wider public's right to know about someone's convictions has been drawn in around about the right place. Our system is deemed far more punitive than other European countries, particularly, it's argued, towards people who commit crimes when they're young. They're paying a heavy price for their mistakes. The blanket ruling that if there's more than one offence, it never goes, is, doesn't seem right to me. Because for me, it was one conviction. I did one thing wrong. I didn't understand, and still really don't understand, why that should never go. It was one conviction. It, it's odd to me that we put a life sentence on a child for doing something stupid. Yeah, slap on the wrist is one thing. Being told off by your parents, um, being told off by the school, but then being handed a piece of paper which is essentially a stamp that says you're a criminal for the rest of your life. Um, it's, it's really detrimental.